ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my complimentary academic transfer of Mechanical Design 238. It will be on shear and bending in beams. Uh, the question was devised by Dr. Nazarul Islam from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at uh, Curtin University of Western Australia. So the question today that we'll be looking at is 2.2 uh, where we are looking at the maximum magnitude on a beam and where it is located at. Um, now the question itself is asking what is the maximum magnitude um, it's maximum magnitude of moments um, um, on this uh, beam here. Uh, to work this out we need to actually uh, draw the bending moment diagram first in order to actually answer this question properly. Um, now this question is different from last week's question whereas um, we were asked what was the uh, shear and bending moments, uh, uh, sorry, shear force and bending moments in the middle. We are looking at what is the actual maximum magnitude of uh, the moments on this uh, beam. Okay, so I'm using paint as a program, like always. Okay, to get started, we have to illustrate reaction forces here. So we got a reaction force, uh, we call this reaction B, and we have another reaction force here, reaction A. Uh, sorry to mess up the diagram here, but don't have much space. See, like any question, there's the reaction forces occurring here, whereas the sum of forces in the y direction would always equal zero. Okay. Now, once we have this initial condition cleared, whereas the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero, well, please watch my previous videos to find out as to why this is uh, the occurrence. We sum the forces going up equal to the sum of the forces going down, so P, this force P, plus, now, the force here uh, is shown as a, let's just say, a distributed load, okay? To actually uh, sum a force of a distributed load, you need to make it a point load. So, you multiply the uh, distributed load by the um, overall distribution a distance, let's just say, L, okay? So it's PL multiplied by L, and this will get rid of the divided by L. Um, for in our case, we get rid of the divided by L. Uh, remember, that's clearly for our case only. Um, and you will end up with 2P, okay? Now, this is, remember, the condition for the sum of force in the y direction. Now, the sum of moments... Uh, equals zero. We know that this is static. Um, this say it about at a. Okay. Oops, a bit messy. So let's get started. Now we know that uh, there's no moments at a. Now we've got a moments force here. Because remember, this is a point load. In the end, you can make it a point load. Okay. So if we make this a point load, we get P divided by L multiplied by. Remember what we did here done here, uh, we got rid of the distribution load, turned it into a point load, multiplied by its distance from A, which is L on 2, obviously, and we go, uh, remember this is all um, plus in our case, so plus because the force is going down, this direction is plus in our case only, uh, alright, so let's go P multiplied by the distance from A, which is 2L, this point load distance 2L, and then we subtract it, remember this is going upwards this direction, subtract, it, you can take it any direction you want, um, some people would make this subtract, and this subtract, and this plus, but in our case, um, I've done it, uh, the forces, uh, moments going uh, clockwise is positive, and counterclockwise is negative, so moving on. 3L multiplied by the reaction force at B equals 0. So a bonky 0, that's 0. Just gather all your like terms on either side. RB equals, uh, you just get rid of each other. So it's PL on 2 plus 2PL. Alright, moving on. Now we get. B equals, just 
going to do some mental math here. I don't want to go through the maths again, guys. This is uh, simple. This is the simple part. All right, so we get a reaction force B, and we know if we substitute reaction force B, we get reaction force A is 7P on 6. Okay, uh, please watch my previous videos as to why this is the occurrence. You should be able to understand now as we go into the intermediate to moderate levels of mechanical design. So moving on. Um, as all bending moment questions, uh, bending moments as well as uh, shear force questions, etc., you need to illustrate three lines, as always. So we get our three lines, okay, and these lines are depicted at the force points. All of them are at equal distance. Alright, I know my one <laughs> does not actually illustrate equal distance, but please think of it as equal. So, we have a reaction force going upwards here. Now, like any other shear force diagram, we can get straight into it and finish it off in a few seconds. But, let's not do that in this time. This time, let's not do that. Okay. So, firstly, obviously, uh, reaction force at A, we know it, it has 7P on 6. Uh, like any situation, you would actually do that first. And for a moment, it always starts off at 0. Okay. Now let's actually do the math this time. Let's go through the actual diagrams bit by bit and split it. Okay, so I'm going to break a piece of x distance and we will illustrate. So this is a different section. We'll just, um, just let you guys know that this, uh, the limits of the broken piece. Uh, let's just first all the forces and in the end it's in equilibrium we know that P divided by L of Newton meters Newtons per meter so the distance that we have taken here is 0 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to L sorry so let me is less than L okay like any other beam question, the sum of forces in the y direction, static or beam question, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. So we gather all the like terms on one side, etc. So forces downward uh, uh, subtracts, okay, sorry, plus uh, P divided by L multiplied by X. Okay, don't get confused. Okay, the entire distance. Of that distributed load is x, okay? So we have uh, illustrated the limit here. It's x, okay? Um, Ra on the other side, which is uh, seven p on six, okay? Just to finish off with some mental math for a second. As I said to you guys, I do not want to go through this. Uh, this would um, take up some time, so V ends up as 7PL subtracts XP6 divided by 6L, okay? Now I've left the term X here for a reason, you're going to find out now. X is to let the, sorry, X is to let you know that it is an actual function. A linear function, if you may. Uh, since it's to the power of 1, it's a straight line, but it will be going off at a certain angle. And the angle which we would find out that it will be going off to is the start and finish point. Now, the finish point for us is L. Okay? So we have to substitute L into this to find its finish point to actually know where this line will go to. Okay? Remember, because it's an x, it's a function. Okay? Substitute x equals L here. 7P L subtracts 6P L divided by 6L. Quick math. P divided by 6. That is the intersecting point along this line here. This line L. Okay? So this is actually, in the end, it's just a linear line. 
Okay, going down there. 